All right, at this time, I'd like to bring to the stage someone who's very important to me, because I can say he is legally my husband. And that is something that I hope anybody who wants to be able to say that, or legally their wife, can say it in the near future, because that's what we're here for, ladies and gentlemen, the equality afforded to every American in this country. So at this time, let me bring to the stage Chris Jarvis. Well, you know what I want to hear it for first is for Ted Olson and David Boys, the lawyers in this case, who operate on our side of the argument. These two men, one liberal and one conservative, joined forces to take down Prop 8. It was an unlikely pairing, to say the least, yet they both eagerly took on this monumental task. They came together, despite their differences, because they felt it was the right thing to do. They felt that equal civil rights for all Americans is not something you take to the ballot box. If Congress was able to act as bravely and with as much integrity as these two men, then we could end inequality in America and enact an all-inclusive Employment Non-Discrimination Act, get rid of the Defense of Marriage Act, abolish Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and become the nation that we were supposed to be from the start, the United States of America. It wasn't easy to have hope when the California Supreme Court upheld Prop 8 after the very same court granted same-sex marriage. In their decision to grant same-sex marriage, the California Supreme Court stated that the word marriage was integral for same-sex couples in order to be equal. In the opposing opinion, they said the opposite. They said the word marriage was too important to the religious community to be taken away from them. It's enough to make you go a little crazy. At that point, I lost much of the foundation of my faith in the court systems in this country as it applies to equal rights. It didn't make any sense. I was confused, angry, and a little crazy. Today, I got my sanity back. This is the way it's supposed to be. Despite everything I was told growing up, that America is the greatest country in the world, that everyone here is treated equally and bound by the same rules, that we are free to speak out on anything we choose, to protest, to disagree, to challenge, and to counter. And the reason that was possible was of the foundation, the core, the very principles of this nation, that all citizens are granted the same civil rights. As I grew up, I saw that wasn't true. And as I railed against the injustices I've witnessed that have been sanctioned by our government, as I noticed the disparity between the ideals of this nation and the reality, I tried to make sense. I tried to make it make sense. I told myself times were changing and equality would come. Until today, I had come to believe that I might not get to see those changes, but I see it now. And regardless of what the future brings, this is the moment I've been waiting for. When the powers that be considered LGBT Americans and pounded the mallet to the bench and proclaimed that we are absolutely equal. Throughout our lives, those of us who speak out about LGBT equality or whatever war is going on or a lack of universal health care or any number of injustices sanctioned by our government, we've been labeled anti-American and labeled as such by the very people who claim their devotion is to the Constitution of the United States of America. Equality, justice, fair treatment, and the right to speak out, protest, and march are at the very core principles of this country. The reason we speak out and seek change and justice is that we are passionately pro-American. This court case, this ruling, this is the way injustices against minorities have been repaired in the past, not by voters. The ballot box is an endless cycle of they win, we win, they win, we win. The courts were established for a reason. The checks and balances present in government were established for a reason. Do not listen to anyone, especially Jim Franklin, who ignorantly says that the civil rights of a minority group of American citizens can be decided by a majority group of voters. That, that is an anti-American point of view. And don't listen to Jim Franklin, who said on the news today that this is a sad day. This is an American day. This is a glorious day. And stand by the truth if you're confronted with the baseless claims made by our opponents. Today's ruling does not impede on anyone's religious freedom. It does not. Marriage in America is a civil act. 
Today's ruling does not threaten traditional marriage. No one has ever de defined that threat. And in this court case, the expert witnesses, when asked how it does, simply said, I don't know. Today's ruling makes no change in the structure of traditional marriage. Today's ruling does not threaten children in any way, and it does not make any change whatsoever to the lives of those who don't support it. It simply does not. Until now, this has all been about how people feel, about same-sex couples marrying. Judge Walker didn't play that game. He held an actual trial. He forced both sides to present, present witnesses and evidence to support their claims. Prove to me that what you're saying, he said. Prove to me that same-sex marriage threatens traditional marriage. Prove to me that it threatens children. And prove to me that children raised by same-sex parents are somehow disadvantaged. On every one of these challenges, the supporters of Prop 8 failed to provide any evidence. On the other hand, David Boys and Ted Olson met every challenge they were faced with. They proved to the court's satisfaction that there is no threat to traditional marriage. They prove that domestic partnership is not equal to traditional marriage. They prove that Prop 8 was nothing more than enshrined prejudice. They prove there is no threat to children, and they prove that children raised by same-sex couples are just as likely as children raised by heterosexual couples to be healthy, successful, and well-adjusted. In his decision, Judge Walker wrote, quote, Proposition 8 fails to advance any rational basis for singling out gay men and lesbians for denial of a marriage license, unquote. This has never been about protecting anyone or anything. It has never been about morality or respect. No argument against legalizing same-sex marriage has ever been founded in reason, logic, or rationality, and now a federal court has stamped that in stone. It isn't often... It isn't often that you get to stand in a moment of such historical significance. This is one of those moments. Right now, we are inside a moment of history that holds the power to initiate the process, finally, here and throughout the country, to becoming an equal America. An America where despite what we individually choose to believe, at the end of the day, we all have the same rights, the same privileges, tax breaks, and access that everyone else has. This is the United States of America, and equality for all is what we as citizens are obligated to support and protect. I've always been, but today, I'm especially proud to be an American. Thank you. Wow, smart and cute. <laughs> I did good, huh? <laughs> Listen, just one quick note on what he was just talking about. I look around here today and I see lots of you here with your children. Maybe they're your nieces, your nephews. But I want to thank you for bringing them here today so they could be a part of this momentous decision. Because they're one of the reasons why these things keep moving forward instead of backwards. Because these children here today know it makes no difference whether they have a mommy and a daddy, a daddy and a daddy, or a mommy and a mommy. They just know that they are loved. And they have a whole community out here who loves them back. Now we come to the part of our show where I have to be kind of like, me and going, and here he goes. This thing takes a lot of money to put on today. It costs us almost $450 to $500 just to rent this little space for an hour and a half. So what we're going to ask for right now is we've got a few people that are going to walk amongst the crowd today with little boxes for donations. If you can, reach into your pocket, pull out a dollar or two, five, ten, twenty, fifty, hundred, whatever you are. Change whatever you can. Help them offset the cost of this event. Uh, it's really great that they were able to pull this all together on such a short notice. As you know, we found out today around, what, two o'clock? And here we are at eight o'clock. And look at the size of this crowd that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger which is what this is all about. They're going to know that this crowd is not only here. We're in Los Angeles tonight. We're in San Francisco tonight. We're in San, uh, New York City, Chicago, Boston. Every city across this great country is celebrating the ruling today here in California because they know what it means to be an American and what this means for the rest of the country. So, again, thank you all for being here. Give yourselves a big round of applause. You're awfully cute looking out there. Not you, Dan, not you. <laughs>